Good evening everyone and welcome to Monday Night Live and it's Tuesday. <laughs> um, as a lot of you would know, I know that uh, you've seen it all going on on Facebook. Um, I did have my flights completely planned so I would be well and truly home uh, in time for Monday Night Live. I was supposed to arrive at Coffs Harbour Airport at midday yesterday and um, what we ended up doing is not arriving until uh, I didn't get in. I think my plan landed, plane landed at about 8 o'clock last night. So uh, huge big delays and I spent most of the day yesterday in Sydney uh, in the airport because uh, there was really nowhere else that I could be. Uh, so we had to postpone the Monday Night Live until tonight. So uh, here we are, it's Tuesday, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how we go tonight. Uh, so welcome, please let me know that you're here once you're on board, and uh, I'll just give Facebook a minute or two to let everybody know um, that we're live, so I can uh, I can go ahead and start talking about our topic tonight. So um, I've just flown in from New Zealand. I uh, had an amazing time in New Zealand, uh, my second time over there teaching clinics. And uh, this time we did a clinic at uh, Dust Alone Ranch where we were last time on the North Island. And, uh, and then I headed south and uh, visited Twelve Oaks Ranch and uh, taught a clinic down there as well. So uh, we did the Balance and Transitions clinics there. They were fantastic. All the horses and riders were amazing. Uh, so it was really fun. It was really exciting. It was nowhere near as cold as I thought it would be. So that was an added bonus, uh, even though I was wearing three layers every day. And some people were riding in t-shirts, so uh, I probably felt the cold, but I think I had enough. Um, I, I had I had purchased a really really nice jacket as soon as I landed, so I uh, got a bargain and a saddlery, which was which was pretty cool. So welcome, um, hi Holly, welcome first time viewer. I'm excited to have you here. Uh, it'll be a bit of an interesting show tonight. We're talking about resilience and confidence. Uh, we're talking about the rider's mental game. So what I'm really hoping is that we're going to get some questions or some scenarios and interactions from you guys who are watching tonight because, um, you know, it's probably a little bit... Uh, uh, it varied, I guess. Um, resilience, of course, is our ability, how quickly we can recover uh, when we're faced with adversity and how we let that adversity um, change our path and how much we let it affect us. So uh, without actually talking about specific things, because obviously with horses, adversity can be presented in so many different ways. Um, there's so many different things that sometimes we need to bounce back from and it can be really difficult from you know horses getting injured and being out of work from having maybe changing circumstances and having to move horses on from horses uh, coming into our lives that were unexpected or horses that um, maybe didn't turn out as well as we thought that they would so um, and then we've got our own personal things to deal with so changes in our lives changes in our um situations in regards to horses maybe humans we get injured as well so uh, there's a lot of adversity that riders can face uh, when it comes to resilience and uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about confidence and um, I'm not really going to talk too much about confidence in terms of being confident around the horses um, because I've done an incomplete show on that Monday Night Live um, I think it's called Overcoming Anxiety and Building Confidence in the Rider, and you'll be able to find that on the Facebook um, page. In If you click on videos, they're all listed there, all the replays are up. So um, specifically confidence in the rider and techniques we help with the rider. Um, hi, Shirley. Welcome. Uh, I hear that you guys had snow. I'm so, so jealous. I can't believe it. Uh, Karen sent me photos of snow the day after I leave New Zealand and the whole time I was there I was talking about hoping uh, hoping that I would see snow where we were so um, that was pretty it was pretty funny but it wasn't it made me a little bit cranky because I was stuck at the airport so I could have I could have stayed for one more day and and got to see the snow so um, yeah I hope I hope you got home all good and Lucy's doing fine uh, hey Mandy thanks for joining um, yeah, I know. I'm glad I'm home as well. Yeah, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big effort, but um, it was a good time, and you know, I'm I'm safe and sound, and uh, it, it, you know, it's all good. So um, I'm pretty happy to be home. 
Uh, missed it in town. Okay, yeah, Karen sent me photos, but I think she's only about five minutes away from the uh, equestrian center that we were at, so it must have been further further out of town. Um, so, yeah, when it comes to confidence, I'm just going to talk about confidence in general, uh, confidence in the rider. Um, not, as I said, not necessarily confidence in terms of uh, getting on or riding. Uh, what I really want to talk about a little more is confidence in knowing what we're doing and probably staying a little bit um, true to our path that we've chosen and ourselves. Uh, I know in the equestrian world, you know, we've got a running joke. Um, everyone's got an opinion, whether you want it or not. And uh, it's certainly as you're coming up through different um, disciplines or as you face different challenges, uh, you know, whether you're at a show or whether you're at a, uh, you know, just hanging out with a few friends, if you're facing any kind of challenge, um, you, you know, half a dozen horse people are, are definitely going to give you, the, you their opinion in how they think it can be fixed. Um, so I think confidence for, for the purpose of tonight's show, I want to talk about, um, you know, being, being confident in, in what we've chosen to do and the techniques that we're using with regards to our horses. Uh, got some groundwork done with Lucy, hoping to ride tomorrow. Yeah, great. Awesome. Good to hear. Um, hey, Helen, welcome. Thank you for joining. So uh, please feel free to share with me your um, any adversity that you've had to face with your horses, any particular questions you've got about that kind of thing. Uh, and I will definitely go ahead and try and a answer those questions as best as I can. Like I normally do every, every Monday night, um, even though it's Tuesday, um, but obviously more so tonight. I've written down a few things, so I am going to start talking about resilience um, and how, yeah, Donna, everyone's a, everyone's an expert. That's exactly right. Um, I'm moving around in my chair here. I can see that I hope you guys you guys will probably be able to see it. My, my office is an absolute pigsty. Um, it, we're, we're under the pump here at Tanya Krauss Horsemanship. I've got a, uh, a, you know, as I just said, we've just flown in uh, today and um, I've got two days. I've got a 10-day course starting on Thursday and we finish that on Saturday night and then I fly out to the United States on Sunday. So um, we are absolutely under the pump here and, uh, and just trying to get everything organized and ready for not only the course, but for me to be away for a month because uh, uh, the lucky Hana gets to hold, hold down the ship here while I'm away. Hi, Tanya. Glad you're back safe. Good to be tuning back with you. Hey, and yeah, thanks for joining. Um, so resilience is, as I said, resilience is about our ability to recover um, quickly, I guess, in the face of adversity. And I just want to go into a couple of things in regards to resilience. Um, I think the, the number one thing when we're faced with any kind of adversity um, in our horse's journey, as I said, it could be an injury to either the horse or the human. It could be a change in circumstances or having to move paddocks or move home or whatever it is. Um, I think the number one thing that we have to do is um, it, go through, obviously, acceptance because um, sometimes things happen and it can be really difficult for us to accept that that's happened and we can we can spend um, a lot of time, maybe even days, maybe even weeks, trying to figure out why something happened and rerunning scenarios over in, our, over in our mind in regards to maybe how it could have been avoided and uh, things like that, which is, it's a valuable thought process to have. I, I'm, um, you know, we all learn from our experiences and I think that we need to allocate some time to think about things in regards to um, making sure that they don't happen again. So we need to put some thought process into, you know, why something did happen and how it can be avoided in the future or if it was avoidable. Um, but we got, we do need to get to a point where we, we need to get out of the whirlwind of keeping reliving the scenario and we need to accept that it's happened and then move on from that. And that's, that's how we begin to recover or, or, um, you know, continue on, I guess, um, in the face of adversity. So uh, the number one thing that we need to do is accept that something's happened. Um, the number two thing is to reset our goals um, or reset our game plan. So often we might have something that we're trying to... Um, Jackie's saying, still trying to find out how to access your live feed. Um, I have no, no advice for you, Jackie, because I think that you're on it. If you're commenting on it, you must be on it. So I don't, if you can't see it, I don't know why you can't see it, but you can comment on it. 
Um, if anyone out there knows, um, I can't actually see what you guys are seeing, but um, I don't know. If you've, if you've commented on this feed, Jackie, you're here, so you found it. Um, so resetting our goals or our game plan can include um, maybe just pushing a goal back a little bit further. It might mean resetting our goal altogether. Uh, so sometimes we might have had a goal to, to attend a particular competition at a certain date or um, compete at a certain level by a certain date or be able to take our horses to the beach or, or on a trail ride or something like that. Um, so no matter what our original plan was, um, it's important to sit down and uh, refocus and write out a new plan and maybe reset the goals in terms of uh, either moving them back further, so uh, retaining the original goals that we had and just pushing them back a little bit further or um, deleting those goals altogether and resetting um, some new goals. So sometimes it might mean that we're, we don't necessarily get rid of the goal altogether. Sometimes it might mean something as simple as pushing the goal back for six months, but then setting a whole lot of smaller goals on the way to that really big one. Maybe we've been trying to achieve something and we realize, hang on a minute, you know, I've, I've sort of shot for the stars, which is great to do. Um, you know, we, you want to aim high because then even if you fall short, you, you still get pretty high. Um, but yeah, sometimes it just means that we need to set some little goals along the way because having goals and um, being able to feel like we're making progress is what drives humans mentally. Um, it, it's what sim stimulates us to keep going and keep doing things. So uh, it's really important to maybe take that huge goal and break it up into little pieces uh, that are more achievable and you can celebrate little achievements on the way. Hey, Bethany, great to have you. Um, Sue, perfecting the new. I still have not seen any video, video footage of this and uh, I refuse to accept its, uh, the viability or, or its existence until I see photo or video evidence of the, of the pool noodle being used. Um, so sometimes in the face of having to reschedule things and things like that, it may simply mean um, coming back to groundwork if the horse is injured or if we're injured. We've done a whole Monday night live on that. Um, it might mean um, even turning the horse out for a spell for a little while. I know that there's been a few of us doing our hashtag TKH100, and uh, I certainly jo I started that, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, I, I started the group and I got that all together, and, um, and it, it's, uh, it's something that I recommend for everyone to do. But I got to probably day 25 or 26 and then uh, went to the Gold Coast for 10 days and then came home and then flew to New Zealand for, for 10 days. So obviously, I, you know, Know, that's sort of 20 days away from my horses on nowhere near um, on on track for my TKH 100 um, so that's a little bit of adversity it was expected um, adversity obviously I knew I was traveling so that's why I started my 100 day challenge anyway um, because what what it meant was that I was able to achieve my three weeks straight of training and working with my horses before I went anywhere which in the past, what I might have done is said to myself, oh, I'm going away anyway, so I won't bother starting. So uh, sometimes it might mean, uh, as I said, my horses have just been out spelling now for about 20 days and someone will come back in uh, to attend the 10 day course with me on Thursday. Uh, it might mean coming back down to the ground if you are injured or the horse is injured or unable to be ridden. It might mean tuning in with some liberty work um, or it might mean changing our ridden work to a different focus. Um, so as I said at the start of the video, if anyone's got any particular questions about um, facing adversity or any particular scenarios that you'd like to hear me talk about, please give me um, you know, a comment in the comments because then I can address your concerns specifically because I am just talking about this on a general term. Uh, the third point that I've got here is to be gentle with yourself um, and on your horse. So um, I speak to a lot of people, uh, a lot of people share what they're going through with me in terms of they might uh, you know, students and people that I've met at clinics and things like that. I always am looking forward to progress updates. Um, and a lot of people keep in touch with me, both in the forums that we have as uh, TKH peeps and also via private messaging and emails and things like that. And uh, recently I, I gave someone um, some advice they had uh, 
they had had a family tragedy and they were not you know spending any time with their horses they just didn't feel um they just didn't feel any kind of inspiration or motivation because of everything that they had been going through and uh and i said you know head back out but do it gently do it do it gently for yourself uh and do it gently with your horses um you know it, because we're unmotivated sometimes or we might have uh, high intensity emotional things going on in our in our home life or in our family life uh, sometimes that means that we push back away from our horses um, we sort of close the enjoyable things out of our life when we're going through really traumatic periods so um, my advice in in regards to coming back from that it's fine to take a break or, or take a spell obviously if you can and, um, put your horses out to spell um, but sometimes it can be a really good idea to spend that time with your horses um, but with really low or, or very nil expectation you know just spending time and reconnecting and getting back in touch um, I think sometimes when we're when we're experiencing certain things um, at home and it causes us to take a break from our horses I think that sometimes we forget that our horses are probably missing us um, and even though we're probably still taking care of them or, or pe we've got people taking care of them for us, um, when, when we've been really active in our horse's life and we're, you know, we're working with them and we're training them and uh, interacting with them every day, for them to just go back onto a routine of um, being fed or something like that, uh, it, you know, they, they will begin to miss us. They will start to think, oh, you know, we used to do stuff all the time and, and now we don't do stuff. So um, it's just something to keep in mind in regards to when you do experience something like that and you do maybe step away from your horses a little bit, um, they, they are probably missing you and they're probably missing the interaction. So it's okay to go back into um, spending time and interacting with your horses at a, at a really low um, expectation level. Um, just reconnect and get back in there and spend some time and, and it'll probably be um, good for both of you. So I've got a little comment here, but oh, here we go. Um, my horse is fine in smaller yards and day yards with riding, but when you take her out to a big paddock, she becomes really forward, doesn't listen, isn't calm. She is known for rearing up and landing on her bum. Okay, I never feel confident to try and correct any behavior when out. So what I would recommend in regards to that, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, it's allowing me. Kimberly, that's the name. Um, Kimberly, what I would recommend in regards to that is uh, trying to, and it sounds like you are going from a smaller yard into a bigger yard and then into a bigger yard again. But what you want to do is get something really solid um, in there in terms of a like a hindquarter disengagement or something like that that's going to afford you a little bit of um, ability to control the moment. So uh, I can't exactly remember the name of the uh, previous Monday Night Lives I've done in regards to um, behavioral issues. Actually, I think it's probably called behavioral issues. But if you go and watch the replay of that, there's a lot of, I share in there a lot of techniques that you can use in regards to just getting that handle back on that horse. Um, because not addressing the issues is is going to add to the, is going to add to the issues as well. Um, Donna's saying that her horse is fine on the trail, but when he is trailing with a larger group, he becomes a bit of a handful. So what you want to do there, Donna, is um, take the time to add horses one by one. So if he is um, fine with just his paddock buddy, um, which is just him and one other horse, then one day you need to add a third horse and, and get him confident with the three horses and then add a fourth horse and get him confident with the fourth horses. Um, sometimes it's similar to... Uh, you know, it's pretty common for horses to face anxiety if they're usually out with one or two horses and then all of a sudden it turns into a big group. Um, it can be quite confrontational for the horses in that way. So I would recommend just trickle feeding and adding to that group. So um, you're just joining one by one. Hey, McNutt, how are you? Um, good to have you on board. So number three is be gentle on yourself and be gentle on your horse. It's okay. Um, number four is engaging support networks. So resilience isn't about doing things on our own. Resilience isn't about having the ability to face adversity on our own and remain strong through everything on our own. Uh, resilience is our ability to recognize that we need um, help and reach out for that help when we need it. So um, support networks are going to include obviously friends, family, um, 
and depending on the issue, sometimes professionals, both human professional people that can help us um, deal with anything that we're going through, and sometimes horse professional people like myself, um, you know, attending clinics or, or getting a coach or something like that uh, to help you deal with any um, maybe issues like uh, w what Donna and Kimberly are sharing with us, issues that they're having with their horses and things like that. Um, you, you definitely want to um, help uh, reach out and get the help that you need in regards to uh, dealing with those issues or dealing with anything that you're experiencing at home. So um, as I said, adversity can be any number of things. When we own horses, it can come from the horse side of things uh, or it can come from um, just what's going on in, in, in everyday life of being a human. Unfortunately, um, you know, we experience not uh great things all the time and uh that's that's what we have to deal with obviously ups and downs all the time so sometimes really big great things happen and adversity can be great things you know maybe someone has a baby or someone gets married and you've got to take a trip or you've got to leave or you've got to do you know you might get a new job or something like that so uh, adversity isn't always a negative thing um, but resilience is required to um, manage all of those experiences and, and find our way through and, and maintain um, uh, ourselves as we're, as we're negotiating this path. Um, so in regards to those four things, um, that's going to help us with our resilience and coming back from uh, any issues that we may face. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the confidence and the mental game of confidence in regards to, uh, I'm going to say sticking to what we have chosen to do with our horses or um, sometimes we face things like, uh, especially in horsemanship, I see it a lot when someone has um, maybe started to do some horsemanship or they've started to, they've changed coaches or they've changed um a professional that they use all the time and sometimes our uh group that we typically hang around with or go riding with and things like that sometimes our group can really question why we've made those decisions uh and sometimes it can lead us to start questioning ourselves uh in regards to the choices that we have made uh unfortunately sometimes we are um we have get bad advice from professionals and sometimes professionals can make mistakes of uh giving uh, saying terrible things so uh, i met a lady the other recently um over the last couple of months she's come to one of my clinics and um she said to me you know i was at a clinic one time and the clinician told me that i should um go and buy a dog because i, I should sell my horse and go and buy a dog um you know, I I think that's tragic when a professional takes it upon themselves to say something um, so brutal to somebody because as far as I'm concerned, when people have um, taken the time and the effort, and I always say this in my courses, you know, I always thank people at my courses for, for um, you know, taking the time and, and time is the most important thing to me. I know we spend money to go to courses and obviously money um, is an important aspect of it, uh, but money is something that we can get back. Money is something that we can re-earn, um, but time is not something that we can ever get back. We can't replace the time that it's taken away from family or friends or away from work or anything like that. So um, I think to be uh, cruel to someone in a negative way and for no purpose other than what it sounds like to be cruel, um, I really I really think that's poor form and uncalled for. I think that if someone's taken the time and made the effort to be at a course, clearly they're there to learn and clearly they're stepping into a place clearly they recognize that they're facing challenges with their horse or they're struggling a little bit with their horse and that's why they've presented themselves to you a professional to try and get help with that horse so to turn around and say uh you know to, to recommend that someone gives up on everything um i think that's a really i think that's a really negative experience um but something that a lot of us uh what's mac saying one guy told me 
if he was my horse, he would kick me. See, um, you know, that doesn't have a positive, um, that, that probably doesn't have a positive effect on us either. And, and you know, some people say things in humor or, or whatever, but, uh, and different people try and get things across in different ways. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that sometimes our friends or sometimes even professionals can challenge us um, in regards to our beliefs and make us think that maybe we haven't made the right choice in regards to what we're doing with our horses um, or in life, but we're talking about horses tonight. Uh, so the first thing, uh, first recommendation I've got in regards to having confidence in yourself is know what you are doing, which sounds simplistic, um, but I guess it's having a little bit of a plan. So a little bit of an overview in regards to, um, you know, what what are you uh, doing with your horses? What are you wanting to achieve with your horse? Um, you know, is it is it a better understanding in the relationship? Is it competitive? Is it confidence? Is it you know what what is it that you're trying to achieve? Um, and what are the methods or techniques that you're going to use to get there? So we just spoke about a few, obviously attending clinics or getting a coach or reading books or getting more education or spending more time with the horses or riding a school horse. I don't know. Um, uh, Kimberly, I think that's Kimberly again, asking how much does our anxiety and fear affect our horses? Uh, significantly is the short answer to that one, Kimberly. Um, horses communicate via energy uh, and they can, rec re they can recognize um, energy changes in us a lot faster than we can. Um, even within our own self, horses can recognize probably how we're feeling when we get to the paddock um, before we've had a conscious thought about it. So we can definitely affect our horses in regards to uh, any emotions and things like that. And some emotions our horses don't understand. So anxiety and fear is something that they do understand because um, it's a, it comes across as a physiology. So heart rate's increasing, um, breathing's increased, their muscles might be our muscles might be tight. So the physiological responses that anxiety and he, and fear have our, on our own body are things that our horse recognise, and they're obviously instinctually um, they're going to recognise them and start looking for a potential threat. So um, significant is the answer to that one. Holly, uh, mature horse, but limited experience off the property due to regular injuries and now going out, very anxious when out. Latches onto any horse when out and often ignores me as she trains with full commitment and lots of try at home. This version of her, okay, and that's where it cuts out. It's not gonna let me read any more. Yeah, it's not gonna let me read any more of that. But what I'm going to say, Holly, is um, that's a leadership issue. So your horse is really confident with you when she's in a um, quiet, uh, common ground area that, that the horse knows. And when the horse feels confident, um, I'm, I'm gonna guess the horse is probably pretty confident at home on its own anyway. Um, and so then when, when it's working with you at home, it's all good. But then when you take him out of his comfort zone or her out of her comfort zone, um, she doesn't, she no longer feels com comfortable, um, within herself, gets anxiety. And then, um, she doesn't f feel the leadership coming from you, uh, for whatever reason. And so that's why she starts looking at other horses because she wants to latch onto them. That's her instinct to latch onto some other horse that is going to present in some kind of leadership role, um, because that's where she feels safe. So, uh, the way that you can, um, do address those issues. Again, I've done a Monday night live on anxiety and it's got a lot of tips in there on exercises and things like that, that you can do. Um, so you need to develop exercises at home that, you know, inside out, back to to front upside down and she knows inside out upside down back to front so then you can start using those tools and exercises outside when she does start to lose her confidence um uh, to to uh offer you um a playbook basically or a toolkit to give her something to do and and show her that you're in control of the situation that's basically um that's basically what we need to do there um Donna's saying, I think sometimes people need to hear something many times in different ways before they hear it for the first time. We were having this discussion in regards to um, uh, my course on the weekend at the South Island. One of the one of the students was saying, you know, uh, I really enjoy how you uh, 
give us an exercise or explain something three or four different ways. Um, and I will typically do that uh, when I'm explaining something. I will say it in three or four different ways. I'm probably doing it right now on this live uh, because I understand that or not everyone is the same. Everyone learns differently. So uh, I will present information in two or three different ways. So uh, hopefully I'm reaching different people and it'll make sense in uh, when it's when it's received in different ways. So absolutely, everybody learns differently. Um, going back to groundwork um, for a start, her reactions when out are more drama queen than at home. Blessed to have friends who will understand and support. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic, Holly. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend watching those earlier videos because we really go into that in depth. Um, so know what you're doing, confidence. Back to that. Know what you are doing. Have a plan. Uh, the second thing is know why you are doing it. So something I'm really passionate in uh, reg uh, at my clinics is when I'm sharing something with you, when I'm sharing an exercise or a skill or something like that with you, what I am really passionate about doing is sharing the reasoning behind it. And I always say to people, you know, when you go home from a clinic and someone walks past you in your paddock or your round yard and they say, why are you doing that exercise? I don't want you to go home and um, I don't want you to say, oh, because I saw it at a Tanya Krauss horsemanship clinic. I want you to say, because it has this effect on the horse's body or I'm moving this part because of this, or it's, it's strengthening this muscle or it's flexing this muscle or it's having this effect on the brain or I'm doing this for the psychology of the horse, etc., etc., etc. So that's obviously applied in regards to different skills that we may pick up and um, and teach our horses. But it also uh, applies to maybe methodology that we've chosen to uh, follow or programs that we've chosen to follow. Uh, ideas about the way that we teach horses things. Um, if you know why you're doing something, then you're going to be able to pick things that resonate with you and leave things that don't resonate with you behind. So what I mean by that is that, you know, there's probably 101 ways to get a horse on a trailer, for example, but only maybe four or five of those ways are going to resonate with you um, ethically, morally, the way you want to relate to the horse, the way you want to handle your horse, all of those sorts of things. So um, if you know why you're doing something, if, if you're choosing a particular method or philosophy because of its um, you, you know, ethical or moral standards or because of its um, because it makes sense in regards to the psychology or the physiology of the horse or whether it makes sense biomechanically, hopefully it makes sense for all of those reasons, uh, then you'll be able to uh, remain confident in what you've chosen because you know why you're doing it in regards to uh, what it's going to be presenting to you from the horse. So I hope from the horse's perspective, I hope that makes sense in regards to how I'm trying to say that. Um, know why you are doing something because then when you're questioned about why you're doing something, you're able to stand true in, in your answer and you're able to stand true to what your um, core beliefs are. Ultimately, we choose um, different methods and different programs because uh, they resonate with our core beliefs and the way that we feel we should be interacting with an animal, uh, you know, be it horse or dog or cat or whatever. Um, you know, we choose to do things in regards to um, what sits well with us so it can take many years i know that for many years i trained um in more traditional methods and uh, they never sat well with me but one i didn't know any alternatives uh and two i had professionals uh and i was very young i had professionals presenting this information to me uh and these techniques to me and telling me that, you know this is what we do and this is how you get this to happen and um you know it didn't it didn't sit well with me and obviously i found a different path and it has resonated with me quite well um and that's why i'm able to share it with everybody but sometimes it takes a while for us to discover you know a methodology that does work or or an, a philosophy or an ideology that does resonate with us and, and the way that we're wanting to interact with our horses um Confidence also comes from being prepared. So I touched base on this a little bit last week uh, in the Nerves in Competition Monday Night Live that, that I did. Um, 
Preparedness for me personally comes in the form of lists. I have um, books and checklists uh, everywhere in regards to everything that I do. So when it comes to packing for a clinic or when it comes to uh, traveling overseas for a course or uh, developing a curriculum, anything like that, I've got lots of notes and I've got a strategy to follow. So um, for me, being prepared is having things written down. It's not always the same for everybody. Uh, not everybody needs to write things down. But uh, for example, the Balance and Transitions course that I presented uh, last weekend in New Zealand, I think it's about the sixth time I've presented that course. I did it uh, on both islands in New Zealand, only a week apart. I've done it um, up, up on the Gold Coast. I've done it, uh, you know, up and down the east coast of Australia. And yet I still, on the South Island, I still had my little uh, checklist or my notepad with me um, that I can refer to and make sure that I haven't forgotten anything or things like that. So for me, being prepared um, is is writing stuff down and knowing that I've got a list to refer to and I can, I can check it off at the end of the day and said, yep, I know that I've presented all of that information to all of clients the last thing I'd want is to be getting on a plane and going oh I forgot to share that exercise and that's the one that brings the whole course together so um, that's being prepared for me it might look different to you uh, but that's definitely something that's going to help you um, maintain confidence is knowing that you can uh, attend somewhere or have a conversation with someone and go um, you know I've done everything I can to be as prepared as I possibly can be for this moment. So even here, you'll see that I'm looking down at a piece of paper. Obviously, at my Monday Night Lives, um, I write down bullet points and I know that I'm, I'm going systematically through everything that I wanted to share with you uh, because I want the information to make sense. Um, I know it gets a little bit scattered sometimes because I'm referring to comments and things like that. Uh, like I'm about to now, Shirley, you did in fact, you referred to your list a couple of times. Yeah, absolutely. During the course on the weekend. So um, being prepared, that's number three on the confidence list. Um, number four in regards to confidence in our uh, what we've chosen to do with our horses is accept the fact that there are going to be naysayers. Um, there are going to be people out there that are going to tell you that what you're doing is wrong or that there's a better way or that there's a better person to show you or any of any of the things um, that we we all have heard as equestrians pursuing um, you know greatness and happiness with our horses everyone's got an opinion on that we spoke about that at the start of the um, live and uh, for sure there's there's always going to be the people that will say oh you, you know you don't need to do that you, you should do do it this way or this way works or um, etc etc so I think it's really important to get to a point in our lives um, hey mummy welcome I think it's really important to get to a point in our lives where we not only accept the fact that there are going to be naysayers there are going to be people that are going to try and um, talk us out of what we're doing um, but I think it also is important to not try and convince them because uh, really everyone accepts information that's presented to them at a certain time uh, when they're ready for that information to be presented. So they're going to ask questions if they want to know what you're doing, uh, They want when if they want to know more information about what they're doing. Um, in our field, particularly in horsemanship, I meet a lot of people that um, will sort of walk around a, a show or a course and see someone trying to, I don't know, ride a 20 meter circle and, and they're up in that 20 meter circle offering their advice and, and um, offering what to do. And I think that it's really unnecessary. I don't think we need to accost people and try and convince them that there's um, a different way or convince them that our way is the way that we should be doing something. Uh, I think that it's a, a reflection um, of confidence if we just are able to um, stand there, uh, listen to their argument and, and say, you know, thank you, I appreciate your opinion, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good in what I'm, what I'm following at the moment. And uh, if, I, if I need any more information, I'll, I'll definitely ask for it. Uh, I'll give you a call. So accepting that there are going to be people that are uh, probably along the way going to tell you that what you're doing is wrong um, and not worrying about trying to convince them, I think is really important. Um, our journey, the last thing that I've got in regards to confidence in self is our journey is one step at a time. And I suppose this brings it back a full circle to the resilience that I was talking about at the start. Uh, we are going to face adversity. There's always going to be something that'll come up um, and maybe 
uh, put a little chink in our armor sometimes and really make us think, oh, am I doing the right thing? Or, or maybe horses come into our lives that are a little bit more challenging or they take a lot longer than we expected them to. And, you know, we thought we'd be on them and riding around and enjoying them. And here we are six months later and we're still doing ground exercises. Um, and that can be really challenging because we can really start to question ourselves and whether, you know, oh, am I enough for this horse? Have I got the ability that this horse needs? Or um, any of the things that we, we like to, to talk to ourselves in negative self-talk um, and, you know, along with all the other experts that'll, that'll give us that advice for free as well. Uh, I think it's important to recognize that every journey is one step at a time uh, and everyone's on their own. And uh, yeah, there's, it's easy to look ahead and, and say, oh, you know, all these people are so much further in front of me. Um, but sometimes we forget to look behind um, hypothetically and say, you know, there's a lot of people behind me as well that are just starting out and that doesn't matter. We're all going to get there in the end. And I think um, the journey is the most important part. It's not about getting to the end. There's no, I don't think there's ever an apex when it comes to horses. I don't think there's a, there's a point where we stop learning or there's a point, um, you know, there's obviously goals along the way, but you get to this goal and then you go ahead and set another goal and you start aiming for that one. So I think it's important to just remember uh, to give ourselves a break every now and then and go, you know, it's fine where I'm at and what I'm doing right now is, is where I'm supposed to be and where me and my horse are at right now. And, and uh and and we'll get there in the end so um i think that's something that's um really ne needs to be talked about and taken on board a lot more often i meet a lot of people uh that are frustrated with where they're at with their horses and they don't pause for very long to look back at, at how far they've come and uh, also to recognize that we're dealing with a living breathing feeling being uh, so horses don't really care about what you've got written down in your diary for goals and they don't really care about what your aspirations are in regards to your journey with them. And, uh, you know, they've got their own crosses to bed. Sometimes they've got their own anxiety or trauma or history or um, misunderstanding or whatever it is. Um, of their own to deal with. So I think it's important to recognize that uh, it's not like driving a car. It's not like learning how to drive a car or ride a motorbike or even fly a plane. You know, you get to a point where you know how to do those things, but horses will present different things to us every day. And, uh, you know, they, they experience things in the paddock probably that we, we don't even know about. So, um, you know, we need to give ourselves a break and understand that uh, an equestrian pursuit is a pretty amazing thing. And, um, you know, what we get with our horses is, is pretty special. So I think it's really important to take that on board and remember that uh, during the hard times and during the challenges. Um, uh, Donna's saying, I'd like to learn how to recognize the horse's needs if they need to run, how to recognize that need in regards to anxiety. Uh, so uh, I couldn't really begin to address that on a Monday Night Live video. Uh, it's a really good question, though. Um, it's all about body language, and uh, we, you know, we can we can definitely share that information, and that's that's the sort of stuff that I do love to share. Um, I'm really passionate about uh, the horse's body language and what they're presenting, and us improving our skills when it comes to reading their body language beyond the typical what we're taught as kids. You know, he's got his ears back, he's cranky, or um, you know, he's got his ears back pricked. That's where he's looking, or this or that. Um, I think that we can really um, learn the skills to read horses quite intimately um, if we take the time to do it and uh, the information is there and it does present itself. Uh, I, I, as I said, I'm really passionate about that. That's I share a lot of that sort of thing in my courses uh, because I think that that's uh, one of the things in our relationship that we miss out as horse owners. It's a really big aspect that we don't spend a lot of time trying to learn, uh, you know, how to read the horse Um we don't really consider the other side of that language. We're often trying to improve us and our skills and our ability to tell the horse what it is that we want him to do. I'm trying to communicate with you and I want you to listen to me, but we don't spend the time to actually think about what the horse information he's trying to present to us and what he's trying to get us to understand. Uh, Emily's saying... Um, yeah, I've realised I have a potential 20 or so more years with my horse so I can... 
um, take as much time and go as slow as you need. 100%. That's exactly right. Um, sometimes it's that's not something that we think of. You know, we humans tend to think of in pretty short, um, short term experiences so what we're doing tomorrow and then next week and maybe the week after and when we're thinking long term we're typically not you know sometimes it might be a holiday to look forward to or maybe we're saving up the money to buy a house or you know do something like that but humans tend to think in really short term um blocks so we tend to not think about um you know we tend to think, what can I get achieved next week? Not what can I achieve in a year and two years and five years and 10 years, because uh, that's something that's really important. And um, it opens up a whole new world, as Emily's saying it, you know, once you have that realization, that, hang on a minute, I've got this horse for another decade or two, uh, or three, it it, uh, it can really open up the possibilities to, to slow down and take your time and get things in there solid. And what are we all running around rushing for anyway? Um, Donna saying we seem to spend a lot of time stopping them from doing things. Yeah, we absolutely do because it's uh, typically what happens is that we it frightens us. So when a horse needs to move his feet, um, we typically don't like it. It's it's what we would classify as undesirable behavior, or it's behavior that we feel is is um, potentially going to do us cause us injury. Uh, or a bad experience or maybe it's going to cause the horse some injury so it's not always something that we like um, to listen to the horse figure out that that's something that he needs to do and go ahead and let him do it so um, you, you're 100% right in, in regards to that we do spend a lot of time stopping them from doing things uh, we micromanage a lot as human beings uh, but hopefully we're all we're all on the path of trying to understand our horse's needs a little more in regards to his um, his his instincts and his physiology and and you know what nature's telling him to do. So um, that brings me pretty much to the end of what I what I wanted to cover tonight in regards to resilience and confidence. Uh, as I said in the title of the video, it is a mental game and. Um, I don't think it's something that we spend a lot of time thinking about as as humans. We've got so much on our plate all the time, and I think I spoke about it either in maybe last week's video or an, or an earlier one, uh, where I said, you know, we spend so much time trying to fix the horse or trying to improve the horse in regards to his balance or transitions or his cancer or something like that, uh, that we don't spend a lot of time spending. Um, looking inwardly um, especially even when we do tend to turn the mirror on ourselves as the rider we might start to look as at, at surface value things so am I sitting correctly I, you know are my hands right how are my legs operating have I got good balance have I got good core strength so we look at the physical aspects of ourselves but we don't often look at the mental aspects and you know where where am I in regards to my horse and you know has my path changed you know do I have I meet people all the time at clinics that talk about um you know what they used to do when they were teenagers and i used to love um eventing eventing comes up a lot it's it's one of those things that is um you know it's that adrenaline rush it's jumping it's galloping it's all of those things and i'll meet a lot of adults that'll say oh, i used to love eventing when i was at, you know when i was a teenager and and i go yeah i i did too but i'm not a teenager anymore and and uh you know <laughs> the logic and um wisdom of age sets in and you sort of think to yourself I don't really want to be galloping at jumps anymore. Maybe I need to find something else to fall in love with because I'm sure there's going to be something out there that I'm going to love doing just as much with my horse. We're, and so what we don't realize is we're chasing that feeling. We're, it's It wasn't eventing that gave us that feeling um, or or it's not the technical stuff that gives us that feeling. It's, it's what we feel when we're uh, doing the things with the horse. So when we're a teenager, the, the you know the fast paced stuff and the adrenaline stuff that gives us that joyous feeling but now as as um, older adults that maybe have taken a break or anything like that um, that is we're not going to experience the same feeling necessarily we're, just because we can gallop and jump over a jump we're, we're, we're probably not going to feel as carefree and free and exuberated as we were as teenagers um, 
these days. But I'm sure that we can find something else that's going to make us experience that same feeling. It might simply be cantering along the beach or going on a trail ride with friends or, you know, going to a, a dressage competition or something like that. So uh, I think to, to look inwardly and figure out what it is that we're trying to achieve with our horses and what, you know, where our journey is taking us as we get old and as we get older and as our horses get older, uh, we tend to want to experience different things and different feelings from our from our journey and that's fine you know people change things change uh life's life's ever changing isn't it i mean you know that's that's part of the excitement of it nothing stays the same that's that that's the one um that's the one constant right uh so uh, you know thank you all for joining me it was uh, as i said it, it was a little bit of a different um a different topic tonight so it was a, probably a little bit more interactive and a little bit more uh, you know we sort of shot off into some different areas but uh, I do really appreciate you joining me as always uh, next week we're back to normal for our normal Monday night live uh, I can't for, I can't quite remember what the next week's Monday night live is going to be but if you click on my Tanya Krause horsemanship page which is uh, where I'm live coming coming from live at the moment if you click on that Tanya Kraus horsemanship the cover photo actually is listing all of the Monday night lives until the end of August and that cover photo will actually be replaced uh, quite soon we'll upload the ones for September uh, I haven't actually quite worked out what I'm going to be doing in September for you guys yet because I will be in the United States and I will be about 17 hours behind so uh, I think I worked out that 7 p.m here our time Australian Eastern Standard is about three o'clock in the morning uh, in the United States so or where I'm going to be in California uh, so I don't know that I'll be able to stay up until three o'clock in the morning and then present something that's um, actually makes sense uh, for you I'm sure that tonight didn't make uh, uh, sense at some times because um, it, like I have been on the road and I'm, I'm pretty jet lagged even though I didn't do time zones uh, so we will figure something out. It will ease, it will either be a little bit earlier, uh, in the day. We might have to screen it at sort of five in the afternoon, Australian Eastern Standard Time or four in the afternoon. And then obviously you guys that are working and kids and stuff like that, uh, you can go ahead and watch the replay at seven. Uh, that's probably what we're going to end up doing, but we will, I will let you know, uh, I am going to post the, um, I am going to post the September topics. If there's any topics that you'd like me to cover, please send them through. Um, I, you know, I love getting feedback from you guys. I love to, I'd love to cover topics that you want to hear. I mean, this, I, I, I you know, I'm sitting here. Uh, the Monday night, li the live shows are cool because you guys get to um, talk to me and say say what you want to say and comment and things like that. So I'm doing it for you guys. Um, I, you know, I'm really passionate about that. Uh, it's really fun for me. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and send in your topics if there's something particular that you want me to um, cover. And again, thank you. I hope you have a great week. Jane's saying, I like Tuesday Live. Uh, first time she's got to watch it. So, yeah, obviously you don't get to do the Monday. So great to have you on board. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, you just have to sit down and do the Monday replay, which isn't as fun because you don't get to talk to me in live real time, but, uh, them's the breaks. Maybe one, maybe one day in, in, in 15 years, we'll be doing live every night at seven. It'll be just like the news. I'll be, um, I'll be here every night with you guys. So, uh, that'd be really fun. Hey, Alexis, good to have you or Joe, depending on who it is on your account. Um, Shirley, I still love to gallop. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's 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 really cool. And a lot and a lot of us do it. Yeah. Um, so have a great week, everyone. I hope you're enjoying your ponies. Um, feel free to contact me if you need anything at all. So uh, horse related, of course. <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great week.